When I was 22 years old, I was just fresh out of college. I got this shiny new English degree and I found a job teaching at an international school in Amman, Jordan. I was super excited. I was looking for adventure and this felt very adventurous, but here I didn't. I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh. I remember I had this two hour long distance phone interview with the principal of the school because this was in the time of dial up internet and Skype was not a thing, let alone Zoom. And so, uh, and in the interview they hired me and two months later I got on a plane and moved to Jordan. Here's the thing, I packed three suitcases full of stuff and as I'm packing I'm going, I mean, do they sell toothpaste in Jordan? Do I need to bring two years worth of, I mean, I guess I might as well. I don't want to not have toothpaste. Uh, got there, they sell toothpaste. You didn't need to bring toothpaste. I didn't know, I, that's how naive I was. I had no idea what I was jumping into. I didn't know if somebody was gonna pick me up at the airport. I just packed my worldly belongings and got on a plane. And um, praise God it all worked out. They did meet me at the airport. The principal and two teachers came in. They said, <laughs> they said, we didn't know what you looked like. So we just thought we'd look for the, white girl who looked lost and say Elizabeth and that's what they did and it was me so <laughs> I did have a ride from the airport which was great anyway I just look back on that time and just my willingness to throw myself into these adventure situations that I had no idea how they turn out just assuming they would turn out fine um, I am not like that anymore <laughs> Now, I am extremely uncomfortable in situations that I don't know if I will have the skill set or the ability to work myself out of or if the control for how it turns out is in somebody else's hands and I have no say in it. I am incredibly unwilling to throw myself into those situations these days. And the funny part is, that's a situation we all find ourselves in literally around the world, globally, we're in a situation that we're trying to control and have no control over. And it's really in me shown me uh, the way that I deal with anxiety and the way I deal with control or lack thereof. And I have a feeling if I was a social anthropologist, I'd be like having a field day right now watching the world respond to a situation where they realize, we all realize globally, um, how little control we actually have. That control really is an illusion in our lives. Uh, it actually reminded me of uh, the, uh, a passage in scripture that I love. So I think all of us would know this passage and I'm gonna give you a little context for it first. Um, this is a letter that Paul the apostle wrote uh, to the Philippian church. He was in prison. So talk about lack of control and not knowing how things will end. He's literally in prison and um, and he writes uh, these words to the Philippian church. So I'm gonna read that to you right now. Just remember, Paul, in prison, not knowing how this is gonna end. He says this, this is uh, Philippians four, starting in verse four. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice, love that. He starts with, hey, don't know how it's gonna end? That's fine, just be joyful. Rejoice in the Lord because that's still true, he's still true. Um, and then it says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. <laughs> Sometimes I realize how much it's not my gentleness that is evident in this season of my life when I have no control. And so I just love that Paul brings it back to you. Let the thing that people see about you be your gentleness. And then this is my favorite part. This is the part you already know, um, but I'm gonna dig into it a little bit with you. He, Paul says this in verse six. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. I love that. Again, in prison and says, don't be anxious, but take that anxiety, take those things that you're anxious about, take those worries that you have, and with thanksgiving, Pour all of that out by prayer and petition. Present your request to God. Tell him all the things you're anxious about, all the things you're worried about, all the things that you don't have control over that you want uh, to have some sort of good re resolution to. Pour it all out to him. Take all of those anxieties and give them over to him. And this is my favorite part. Paul doesn't say then, and then everything will be fine. And then you'll get all the things you're worried about and they'll all be perfect. Instead, he says this. Present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. If you give your anxieties to God, he will give peace back to you. And it's not a peace that's based on our ability to control our situation. And it's not a peace that's based on our knowledge of how things will end. It's solely a peace based on who God is and his ability to work things out. Um, and that transcends, the peace transcends understanding. It doesn't make sense uh, to have peace in these times when there's so much to be anxious about. But that's what God says he'll do. That's what Paul told the Philippian church he would do, is if you give him your anxiety and your requests, he will give you a real peace that transcends understanding. And this peace will guard your hearts and your minds. So you don't have to roll around in this anxiety, wondering how this is going to turn out, um, mourning your loss of control. FYI, we never actually had that control. We just thought we did. And um, instead, you can live in a place of peace. So I've been practicing that this week, giving all of my anxieties, all of my worries over to the Lord and letting him give me back peace. And all I can say is it works. I uh, am not always in a place of peace, but when I find the worry rising up, how will this end? How will this turn out? I pour all that out to God in prayer and I um, settle in the knowledge of who he is and how he works. And I find this peace that transcends understanding washing over me. I'd love to hear um, as you try that, how that goes for you and uh, if you can find that peace as well because it's a piece that um, uh, is far better than <laughs> just thinking about going to Jordan. I wasn't peaceful because I knew how it would end or because I knew God was in control. I was in this space of adventure. And so to trade my anxiety, not for just this naivety of throwing myself into the crazy and hoping it works out, but rather trading my anxiety for peace, a peace that's lasting and a peace that I can stand on, this is a better place for me. And I'd love it if you would try it too.